Hey everybody, it's your girl Terry, and you see where I'm at in the basement, so you know what that means. Another ghost time story time with your girl Terry. Stay tuned. Hi guys, I have so many ghost stories to bring to you, but today I have to actually address something that I just experienced two nights ago in my bathroom. So, I'm sitting there, and you know how, like, when you wake up in the middle of the night, it's not like how when you first go to sleep, like, everything's, like, dark, your eyes aren't acclimated to the night light or the light that's coming in, so everything seems dark. Well, when you wake up, your eyes are automatically adjusted to the light. So, I don't need no lights when I have to go to the bathroom. I just go straight into the bathroom. There's light that's coming in in the window, and it shines through the whole bathroom. And there was always this one spot in the bathroom since I moved here. Been here three years. And it's like, I know you guys seen like my um beauty videos. So it's like my toilet, it's a big space. And then with all this, my stuff, then the toilet, the sink, and behind is the, the shower and the tub. And um, there's this little spot between the shower and the um, actual sink. <laughs> Why I couldn't get that. <laughs> Anyways, between the sink and that. So I usually just look there because I always got a bad feeling like something's just going to pop out at me. Lo and behold, nothing popped out of me in that spot. But as I'm looking at that spot, I start to see my shower curtain open. Now I'm dead awake. Like, when you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, some people are asleep. Me, I tend to wake up. And it takes me about like a half hour to fall back to sleep after it's all done. So I'm sitting there and, and I'm going to the bathroom and I'm, I'm looking in that spot and at my side vision, my peripheral vision, I see my shower curtain open up. So I'm like, what the fuck? I turn my head. And what I seen next was it blow out air. Like I kind of like blew my shower curtain out some. And this dark shadow, <laughs> dark shadow come puffing out right at me. Right in my face. Now you just want to talk about being scared. I'm not scared of a whole lot. This didn't scare me. Again, like I said, it was a what the fuck moment because of this. When it came at me, I just was like, are you serious? What the fuck? And it came at my face and literally went through me to where I felt like I was a part of that peppermint patty commercial where it's like you feel the chill, you feel the coolness. It rushes through you. That's how I felt. I felt like I took a bite of that. And my hair blew back, literally at the end, but that's how I felt. The cold, like, literally felt like it blew my hair back, went through my body, and off. Because, like, as soon as that happened, I was shocked for a second and looked and seen it go off. Which was into the next room, which was my daughter's room. So, needless, needless to say, I went and grabbed, again, my sage, my holy water my Bible, my salt, and prayer. And that's what I did. To me, I don't think that that's just going to cut it at the end of the day. Um, I know that we have some gifted people in the family that can actually see things, um, that actually can hear things and receive messages. Now, ever since I was a little kid, that's not saying that I'm not a religious person. Let's get to this. I studied theology from when I was like very young because my mom was, um, I was born and raised Baptist, but my mom was born and raised Catholic. So when she decided to have me, she changed from Catholic over to Baptist. And that's where I got to do Bible study and all that. And so I realized the cult, the church would start to become a cult. My mother had brought us into a cult church to where um, they literally were taking turns beating each other's children. 
when the children weren't even misbehaving. Um, I seen them go to people's houses, and my boy Bobby, God rest his soul, he had brought a girl into his house that was married to one of the parishioners, and like seven dudes came to his house. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Talking. You better give us our, her back. You better give that girl back to her husband. This is not your business. It's between God, her, and her husband. Now, a little backstory on that. Her husband was beating the shit out of her. So bad, and the church co-signed the shit. So right then and there, I just knew that shit was already a cult because I'd been done left it. Now... I'm young and I'm still searching out religion and I go and um, I start studying the Torah and then I start studying the Quran and then I start studying Buddha, Buddhism, I'm sorry, Buddhism um, and a couple other ones and at the age of 11, I remember being 11 years old when I got, no sorry, 11 years old when I stood up to my mom and said, all of the religions are the same. They're all, first off to me, man-made. Um, they all come back to the same stories, the same principles, the same everything. Like everybody has a Moses story where, where you know, or they have a Noah story where there's flooding and stuff like that. Um, they all have a Jesus. You know, it is what it is. So that's when I start talking to my mom about that, and she did not like it. She wanted me to go to church one day. I had to be, like I said, 11 years old, and I'm standing on the back of the steps. This is how bad her Caldy Church was. You know, straight steps, they go all the way down, and this is on Kensington, on West Arch Street in Kensington. And I say... I'm at the top of the steps, but my back's facing downwards. And she's at, I'm like, you know, she's at the top of the steps, but I'm at the bottom before the last, okay? Sorry about that. Sorry about that, seriously. So she's at the top, I'm at the bottom before you hit the, the top. And I'm explaining to her, I don't think I should have to go, like, I don't think that it is what it is, I believe that all these these religions are the same mom and she went so you're not going to go to church now mind you we've been going we went to church six to seven days a week every week for years for years all the way up until i think i was like 14 because i did still go but not to her church because she just kept on like trying to beat me and, and submission and all that but we're at the top of the steps and she was like i can't believe you don't want to go to fuck the church and she Push me. And I remember flying backwards down these steps. And I don't even know how I'm alive yet to this day. Because anyone that would have taken that fall the way they did should be dead. Because they were hard wooden steps. I was little. Mind you, like I said, before I was very skinny. At this point, I think I was like 75 pounds most. If that. You know what I mean? And she just pushed me. And my feet went from behind me. And I remember hitting the steps. And then... Down every single one of them. So to me, I'm like, why would religion want someone to be like that? So like... I don't know. Hateful. Um, very judgeful. Um... There were a lot of things, but um, I still didn't give up on God because I believe there is a God. Out of all them stories, what does it come back to? A God. One God. Of course, God may have his many little gods, aka his little angels and stuff like that. I get that. I am totally at one with that. And that's when I knew that it wasn't right for me that the specific religion was not good for me that all religion was correct and that all I had to do was practice all I had to do was pray 
talk to God, keep my faith, and walk in the light. That's it. I did not have to do anything extra like the cult, like the cult church said I had to do. Um, I remember at one time, oh my God, I didn't even want to take, you know, you give the, the body of Christ and you get your little wine shot with it or grape juice for the kids. I remember multiple times bypassing that because I was afraid because I seen the whole Jim Jones situation. So it was kind of culty like that to where, but it's to where they didn't kill everybody. But you might as well have said they've killed everybody because anyway, you knows that in Fishtown that this one church is the epitome of cult. It's a cult church. And if any of you are watching, yo, try to rethink your strategy. How are you going to invite people to listen to God, but then turn them away at the same time because you don't like their piercings, their tattoos, any of it? That's being judgmental. And then, whoa, hold up. I know what this was from a ghost story to a Christian story. Then one time when I broke up with my baby's father, because this is killing me, I, oh my God, I'm going to say it. I dated a girl. Her name was Marcella. She was um, a black girl. She was beautiful. She had this beautiful brown skin like she was just gorgeous her body was to die for the girl was smoking hot and me and her just clicked right off you know from gate because I just left my baby's dad and it was a rebound but still in all it was really special to me at the time because it it brought me out the closet fully on being the B in LGBT so with that said um, my mom finds out and I didn't think my mom was going to be so judgmental because my Aunt Mary, she's gay. She lives as a man. Some of her friends really are gay people. And she grew up with them knowing this. Like my Aunt Mary played two roles. In the morning time and daytime during school, she was Mary. But after school, she was Mary's twin brother, Rick. And this is going back in like the late 50s. So, you know, this goes back a long time, and that's why it shocked me when my mom did what she did to me. So, I come home from seeing my girlfriend, and I'm like, why are all these cult members in my house? And they're all sitting there in a circle in their chairs, and they're, they were waiting for me. And they have the Bible at hand, and they say to me, you're an abomination. You're going to hell. And I said, why am I going to hell? Explain to me why I'm going to hell. Check in the Bible and you let me know your verses on why I am going to hell for being with who I care about. Well, they tried. And then I always sent them back with, okay, so you're going to tell me because they, they went for my fake hair, because I wore wigs for, I mean, I've been wearing them since I was young. I'm going to be 42 next month. I've been wearing them for, I would probably say since I was like 14, okay? Because it just is what it is. And I got quite a lot of slack from that. But now nowadays, girls, girls like that, like me, they can do it, and nothing really gets said, and everything's all peachy because it's acceptable. But I got to talk shit on, on that note. But that's another story. So they're all grouped up and they got their Bibles open and they're flipping and they're flipping. And they're like, Anyone has the mark of the beast. Anyone that alters their body. So now they're calling out my fake hair. They're calling out my piercings, like I said, and my tattoos. So I hit them with, first, what about the tribes that are over in other countries that don't know about God, but yet they pierce themselves, they put plates in and stuff to give to their God, to give representation to their God, glory to their God or gods, however it may be. They get tattoos for God as what they would call God. I don't know what they would say in their language, but it all translates to God in the end. 
Now, with that said, after I said that, they all looked at me like I had ten heads and I was about to turn into the Antichrist. And that's what gave me my motive to lean in and tell them. So, which one of you has the book of life? Because in the Bible, it says, Thou shalt not judge. Only God, not even Jesus, knows who's in the book of life. So by that, you tell me to go to hell. You already, what, got access to the book of life? Totally shut them down. They had nothing to say. They got up out of the house and they walked the hell out. Just like they walked in, they walked the hell out. And I'm sure they walked, however they walked in, they thought they was going to be cute and win. But they didn't win that day and they never won against me. Hey guys, I'm done beating your ear for today. Because I have a lot of things to do. I'm packing. Um, I started a new position. Not yet, but interviewing and all that. I'm about to start my new position. And all this bad stuff could not have happened at the worst time. But it did, and that's just my life. But I'm going to fight through it, and I'm going to remain to be strong. Because I still have faith. No matter what my faith may be, but my faith will always keep me connected with the higher power. And I know that I say universe all the time, because we are all connected. Okay, guys, now that I'm back, I just want to let you know that I'm probably not going to tell you the last ghost story for today. And for my ghost people, I'm so sorry, but I had to let all that out because it all kind of interconnects. And by the end of all this, you will understand um, what I'm trying to do and what, I, what I'm here for, other than my bucket list, because you know, after my bucket list, I had to what, come up and, and actually make some story times or get some good content. And, you know, my content's been okay, hasn't been the greatest, but it's been okay. Um, so, with that said, I'm going to, like, really do have a lot of packing today. Oh my god, guys, like, pray for me on that one. I don't care what religion you are from, pray for me on that one. If you believe in the universe like myself, send good positive vibes my way. I truly need it. Um, and then I'm going to um, tell you guys a, a decent ghost story next week. I have some really good ones from when I was younger that I know you guys will enjoy. Um, I do enjoy watching your guys' pages so much. I'm sorry that I haven't been around as much as I usually am, but I just want to take this time to say thank you for the people that have always supported me. Nick from In The Sauce We Trust News. Now it's In The Slime We Trust News. Uh, who else? Tune215. From day one, y'all have been on my side and riding with me. Ball Life, Mary Jane, Need Gore, um, Content Creators, come on guys, because I have some amazing ones that I watch that I actually love. Hello, hello. She, she makes arts and crafts. She does all kinds of uh, nice little stories and little gems that she drops. She's amazing. Go check her out. Um, also, go check out Tracy. She's so crazy. I'm going to leave her link down below. She is one of the funniest, but yet sensible people with knowledge gems and some knowledge for that is when during a story time. I absolutely love that girl, like that lady, that girl, whatever. She, we're both women, so I love her to death. Um, please go check her out. I'm going to leave everybody's links down below. After I upload, I'm going to have to go fetch them. And then, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to figure it out. The Horror Man. He does a slashback Saturday, y'all. Watch that. There's so many people um, that you see in my list that you can tell that they're horror people. They give great reviews. Some of them give reviews on just like... And that's like, isn't that Devin Graham? He gives reviews on like anything. He don't just do challenges or anything like that. And I have a, quite a few like that. Then I have my gaming people. JD Gaming, Oddfellow215, uh, Main Sar Satires, or Carlos. You be changing your name a lot, Neff. You need to stop doing that so I can give you a proper shout out. Um, to my son, Jacob. For Jacob. I'm going to leave his little link in the description as well. He's not a big YouTuber. He does not want that right now. But he games. 
and I'm telling you, it's all you can click together, everybody can get together, and hopefully I'm not forgetting anybody, honestly, because I don't want to forget anybody. Um, oh, MS understood. She has multiple sclerosis, guys. She um, will give you daily gems on how it is to live with it and what she has to put up with. And she's also a universal person. So, Queen, if you're watching, namaste. And um, she also just, she's passionate. A lot of people misconstrue what she means, but she's so passionate about how she feels that she just, she gives it her all. And sometimes she's not feeling her best. So that's totally understandable, but I ride with you. And I know many people that should ride with you as well. Guys, I still haven't quit smoking cigarettes, but I'm down to so many a day. It's, just, it's like a volume for me. So anyways, um, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. If I did, guys, oh, Bapo Neon. Bapo Neon is a creator that does these universe um, cartoon slash series. Um, they're not, I wouldn't call them cartoon, but they're more like uh, animated comic book strips. And he puts them together as a series. And Babo, I hope I got that right. That That's what you do. You are an amazing person. Sam, who's in my comments, he's an aw another awesome dude. Like I said, you can find most of the awesome people in my comment section. Or if you go into my liked videos, just do that. You know what I like. You'll find exactly what I watch and exactly what I like by that. And they're all solid people. So with that said, guys, much love. Much peace. Stay on your grind. Stay doing you. Be happy. Smile. Even if you're going through bad things, it's not the end of the world, guys. You're going to see your, your light at the end of the tunnel. You have to. You, that's, that's a must. That is an absolute must. You have to see your light. You have to, and if it comes to creating, you have to come to a vision. And you have to follow it through, no matter what. No matter what you're going through. You may be feeling sick, you may be feeling tired. But you know what, it's okay to take a break every now and then. But to quit and give up on it, that's not okay. You're giving up on yourself and why do that? You never know where it's going to take you. Again, much love to all my people. I'm out. Peace.